so high, oh, say, that our God is made. That's what they say. And then they go, lie, 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 lie. <laughs> and they dance and they put each other on their shoulders and they march around. All right, July, Pastor. All right. Praise God. Amen. Let's Please stand. In. Please stand one more time. This is the two to make sure you're all ready for this. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're ready. We're ready. Hallelujah. 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 Our Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord, we recognize that this is the day that the Lord has made. Not like yesterday, not like tomorrow, dear Lord, that this is a day for today, dear Jesus, and we will rejoice in it, dear Lord. We are glad to be here, dear Lord. We're glad to be celebrating as a family, dear Lord. We're glad to recognize the difference between Passover and Easter celebration, dear Lord. Amen. We're glad, dear Lord, to have the knowledge, the wisdom, dear Jesus, the study habits, dear Lord, so that we we can show ourselves approved, dear Jesus, and be blessed by your word, dear Lord. Help us to grow continuously. Lord, as pastor ministers this celebration, dear Jesus, we're praying, dear Lord, for the words to continue to flow within him, dear Lord. Let it be a point of overflow, dear Lord, that we catch it, dear Jesus, that we understand it, dear Lord, that it gives us a sense of peace because we understand it in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord, and we praise your holy name. We pray, dear Lord, speak to his tongue dear lord speak to his heart dear jesus let it come as you had given it unto him in jesus name we pray and we thank you amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. hallelujah hallelujah you may be seated uh, my uh my high school coach taja is here my high school football coach that's uh bruce hill uh, All-American quarterback, University of Arizona. If you go to the college, you'll see his name on the stadium. He was so good, right? Hall of Fame there. So praise God, he's here. He's 70 years old. So he's blessed past the generation, right? Yeah. Praise yeah. God. All right, praise the Lord. Hey, um, I, I showed you that clip of them celebrating in Israel last night. Uh, because you need to know how important this day is, okay? First of all, you need to know this. They are celebrating this day because they were brought out of slavery in Egypt, okay? But is that the main thing that the celebration is about? Absolutely not. It is not only about coming out of Egypt because what Jesus was doing was setting up a typology of a future deliverance from slavery, okay? And so if you understand that this is all about delivering mankind from slavery, this is not just about delivering Egypt from slavery. So if it's about delivering all of us from slavery, then that means the 14th of Nisan should be the most important day on the planet. Amen. Because this is the day that Jesus planned to come and enter into his creation. And once he entered into his creation, his plan was to suffer and die on the cross to pay for all of your sins. Exactly. So this is the day that Jesus did that. Do you understand? Yes. Amen. You, 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 listen, I'm happy about that. Maybe you didn't have that much sin, but I'm happy. You understand? Amen. We smoke, club going, drinking, fornicate, doing whatever I can do, showing myself that I don't belong to God. Curse you out in a minute. You understand? Y'all don't think I'm talking about me, huh? Y'all think I'm talking about somebody else? No, I'm talking about me. This is a, the, but I'm, you need forgiveness for sins, you understand? Sins are crimes in the spiritual realm. They have to be paid for. Someone has to pay for them. God knew that. You can't, we can't just excuse you they have to be paid for. Like you do a crime in, the, in, in this world, they, they, you don't go on the judge and just say, well, I know you robbed a couple of banks, but 
you're excused. Everybody in there would be mad. The people who they, they pulled the gun out on, the people that got the money took it, everybody said, you are the worst judge in the world. You let this criminal get off scot-free and you just excused him. God knew if you commit a crime, you have to, the, the crime has to be paid for. God planned to enter into this realm, the realm that he created human beings. He planned to enter into it and pay the debt for all your sins. Okay? So they've been paid for. So once you accept Christ, this is, listen, you guys, once you accept Christ, now you go, oh my goodness, I'm in the Lord. You know, I'm a Christian. And somebody got to slow you down and say, well, hold up, man. You just got in the game. You ain't done nothing. You understand? You're going to make some mistakes. But because of what Jesus did on the cross, you can now ask for forgiveness. And he says he will place you right back in order, put you right back in the game, and you're right back in Christ again. You understand? Now, you don't do that because um, I'm going to make mistakes on purpose because I know God will forgive me. God, the Bible says God is not mocked, which means basically you can't make a fool out of me. OK, but if you make an honest mistake and you get caught up, God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So now not only are we saved, but we also have the right of the children of God. That means we can go to our parent and say, I'm sorry and be forgiven. That's a privilege. You understand? That's a privilege. All of this Jesus did on the cross. Amen. Okay, this is a redemption of mankind. Now he's on the cross, and what is he paying for? He's paying for your sins. He's paying for his sicknesses. So he, he's a healer. You understand? He's Amen. paying for nefesh, your soul, meaning your emotions. So he's a healer of emotions. So if you've been through a lot in your life, you need to ask God to heal you of those emotional scars because he's a healer of nefesh, your soul as well. You understand? All of this, Jesus is on the cross and he has agreed to suffer and die for your sins. He has agreed to do it. Okay? This is something that if you knew what you were about to go through, and we'll read about this today, because as they were having the Passover meal, he walks to get, he walks out about a stone, a, a, a stone throw away, and he goes to Gethsemane, and he says, you guys stay here, I'm going to go over here and pray, and uh, I'll be back. He goes over and starts praying, and what does he pray? Lord, if this cup can pass from me, let it, but your will be done, right? It says he, he was in such anguish, he started sweating blood out of his forehead. I forgot the medical term for it, but it really can't happen if you're that stressed out. You understand? So what was he so stressed out about? His death on the cross. They yanked his beard out of his face. They took turns beating him. They pushed thorns into his head. They did all of this. Now, if you didn't know how you were gonna die, you would just be, it, it would just be something that you're waiting to happen. But he already wrote how he was gonna die 2,000 years before he got there. You understand? Or 4,000 years before he got there, he already knew everything that's going to happen they're going to spit on me they're going they're going to uh, uh shoot dice for my clothing they're going to put uh, uh thorns in my head they're going to spit up they're going to talk about my mother while i'm on the cross do you know that they talked about his mother while he was on the cross they said well we're not we're not uh, uh children of fornication because they knew that joseph wasn't his daddy so he's being insulted and yet on the cross, Jesus says this, nothing like a lamb silent to the slaughter. He said nothing. Could he have said something? He's God. He could have came off the cross and whipped them all 
But he said, no, if I come off the cross, it won't benefit mankind. Amen. So he stays on the cross and he suffers and he suffers. You understand? Amen. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through the Passover uh, uh, story of coming out of Egypt. OK, I feel so bad for Jewish people because they don't understand. They don't understand what the whole day was all about. What was Abel and Cain all about? Jesus. Cain and Abel, did one brother killed the other brother, right? Yeah. So what was that all about? Jesus says, I'm coming into the world, but my own brother's gonna kill me. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. What was Adam all about? God's gonna create me out of the ground on the eighth day, but I'm gonna, he's gonna put me to sleep and I'm gonna get pierced in my side. So what was that about? One day I'm coming into the world, I'm gonna die, they're gonna pierce me in my side while I'm on the cross. What comes out of my side, God's gonna make it to a bride. And what came out of his bl side? Blood and water, baptism and rebirth. And now you have the ability to become the bride of Christ and to be a participant in the, in the wedding day of the Lamb. Understand? So all this is happening. I'm watching in Israel last night they got each other on their shoulders. They don't even know about forgiveness of sin. All they know is we came out of Egypt. They have no idea what, 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 what they're doing. They got people on their shoulders. They're la, 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 la. This is the day. Hayom, 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 hayom. And they're just singing and dancing and praising God. And I said, and I'm watching and going, this should be a Christian day. This should be the biggest day for Christians. We're the one that can listen to the scripture, okay? You guys got your notes? Please give give uh, notes to everybody. Make sure we have notes. Yes. Okay. Jesus Christ, our Passover lamb. Okay? 14th of Nisan. Worldwide redemption from slavery. That's what Nisan 14 is about worldwide redemption from slavery what is redemption to redeem something that means you've got to pay you understand so you can't you can't redeem your car if you don't pay they're not just gonna let you oh yeah i'll hear the keys no you got repo we or you got told we got it you want to redeem it come in you pay the price and you can have it back jesus came to redeem so he knew he had to pay a price you understand so in the book of Exodus, chapter 6, verse 5 through 8, it says, I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians kept in bondage. I have remembered my... Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burden of the Egyptians. I will rid you out of their bondage. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. How's he going to redeem him with an outstretched arm? With his power, yes. But on the cross, this is a poetry. He's talking about a future redemption. I'm really going to redeem you like this. Because I can't pay for your sins right now, but I'm coming and I'm going to redeem you with an outstretched arm. You understand? And so, and it says, and with great judgment, I will bring you uh, into the land concerning uh, um, that which I did swear to give to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, and I will give it to you for an inheritance. I am the Lord. So if you look at my table here, I should have four glasses, but I'm going to set this one aside. Do I set that aside? Because before the great and day of the Lord, the judgment of God, Elijah's coming. So every year they set this cup aside as they're doing the Passover service because they want to know if Elijah's coming. Because they know when Elijah comes, that means judgment is coming and Israel's going to be rescued. Okay? So this Passover, on this day they're having Passover meal. And they got the cup of Elijah sitting on the other side. Okay? 
I want to read the, the very bottom of this. It says for 1500 years, they practiced this mikra, the dress rehearsal. The, the mikra or the dress rehearsal means that every year since Jesus died on the cross, they do a dress rehearsal of this exact same thing every year, remember it. Jesus hasn't even entered into the world, but after Egypt, they are practicing Passover every day. Now, if a mikra is a dress rehearsal, that means the real play is coming, right? Yes. right. And so, for 1500 years they already know what passover is right. they know what a lamb is they know all of this okay and it says because this is what it's about john chapter 8 verse 34 jesus answered them most assuredly i say to you whosoever commits sin is a slave to sin you're a slave to sin you came into this world and you became a slave to sin okay you may be, once you, when you're little, it takes a little bit of while for the, 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 the symptoms of your slavery to catch up. Because the symptoms of your slavery is sin. Maybe when you're five, you, you might have told a lie or whatever. By the time you're seven, maybe you picked up a couple of dollars that didn't belong to you. These are symptoms of slavery because you're born you're born into slavery slavery is sin and sin is slavery i can't stop cursing why because you are sin because you are a slave to sin i can't stop getting high you are sin to you are, you are a slave to the sin you understand so when you are a slave to sin you need a way to away from the sin you can't do it. You know why you can't? Because you don't have the spirit of God in you. What do you have inside of you? A dead spirit. Your body, a soul, and a dead spirit. So Jesus says this. Before we continue, let's go to John chapter 3. You're in John chapter 3. All right, I'm going to give you time then. Who is the 888? Jesus. Jesus. See, well, you guys know that. I love it. Because the new beginning is the eighth day. Okay? Now, listen what he says here. It says, now there was a man from the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. How can a man be born when he is old, Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of the water and of the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. You hear that? Your mommy and daddy gave birth to you. You were born in the flesh, okay? But you're not born with a living spirit. I mean, the spirit of God. To get the spirit of God, you're going to have to accept God's way of receiving the spirit, which is the door, Jesus Christ. So here it says, it says, flesh gives fle birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it please. You hear it sound, but you cannot tell where it came from or where it's going. So it is with, with everyone born of the spirit. And Nicodemus said, how can this be? 
He still didn't understand. When you're born of the spirit, the spirit of God comes inside of you. Now, for the first time in your life, you're going to have conflict. OK, now you now now somebody mess with me. I curse them out and I hear the Holy Spirit inside me saying, what are you doing? And I'm like, what is that? Man, that's a beautiful girl. I sure like to get with her. No, you wouldn't. Who is that? I'm going to party and get my drink on. No, you're not. You're going to stay. You're going to go to Bible study. No. Who is that? It's like having your parent move into your house, right? You're trying to do stuff, and now your parents in there going, no, you're not. You're going to stay here, and you're going to go to your room. You're going to do your homework, right? So the Holy Spirit starts checking your, 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 your actions and making sure that you're not leading yourself into hell. You understand? So it's going to give you advice. Now, as a Christian, and you are born again, you have the right to quench the spirit or be obedient to the spirit. How do you quench the spirit? If your mother's talking to you and you don't want to hear it, what do you do? Well, not in my house, because you get it. <laughs> Put your fingers in your ear and say, I don't hear you. Right? right? So the Holy Spirit is trying to discipline you because he doesn't want you to go to hell. He wants you to go to heaven. So he's trying to discipline you by doing the right thing. Right. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to do this. Okay? But you have to be born again first. No one is born with the spirit of God. How long have you been saved? Oh, I've been a Christian all my life. No, you have not. You say, hear somebody say that, you go, no, you have not. There's nobody that's been a Christian all their life. When did you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? When did you confess that he is Lord and ask him to come in your life and be your Lord and Savior? When did that happen? Because that's when you became born again, okay? And now once you're born again, the Holy Spirit's in you. He's working with you. He's trying to pull you into the kingdom of God. He knows you're in a world that don't love you. So because you're in a world that don't love you, guess what? Was I at a family party last week? What they say? Hey, Sandy, you want a cognac and a Coke? No, bro, I don't drink. The Bible says, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is inside of me. There's a conflict. No, now you can ask me that in my 20s. I'd be like, yeah, give me a double. You understand? But I didn't understand the fight and the struggle against sin. The Holy Spirit is given to you to teach you how to make it to heaven. To battle against your nature and the things that desire to sin against God because God knows each sin has to be paid for. I paid for it on the cross. If you don't want to accept me, then you can pay for them yourself. Okay? And you ain't have, you don't have enough money to pay for your sins. Because this with, with God, Jesus paid with what? With the blood, with his blood, with his precious blood he paid for. You can't pay enough for your sin. Only thing, your payment for sin is Hades. Is hell. You understand? So you don't want to pay for your sins. You're like, God, no, I want, I, I, I take your payment, redeem me. Okay. So let's go to the next page of our notes. Here we have on the table. I'm moving you guys. Here we have on the table. We have on this table, we have parsley. We have salt water in the middle. It's salt water because what? Bitter tears, okay? The tears of slavery. We got bitter herbs, okay? We got a boiled egg and it has nothing to do with a rabbit. <laughs> it goes with the shank bone. The shank bone and the boiled egg say that one day there'll be no uh, sacrificial animals inside the temple. So it says that what? Animal sacrifices are going to one day cease. Since Jesus, guess what? They don't have a temple. They can't sacrifice any animals. You understand? So this tells them that animal sacrifices were supposed to cease. When? At Passover. Why? Because Jesus is the, is the lamb and he died. We don't need it no more. 
You understand? Right. Right. Okay. I take some some parsley. I dip it in salt water because of all of the tears that I spent in slavery. I take onions because it's bitter, and I dip it in a bitter uh, 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 reddish uh, um, uh, horseradish sauce. You're getting all this bitterness and all these tears because you've gone through something. You understand? Some people come to Christ, they walk down the aisle, and they've been through something. You understand? People accept Christ, and they've been through something. Sometimes they're crying while they're accepting Christ because their sins are being paid. And now they feel something inside of them they've never felt before. What is that? The Holy Spirit. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus once you get born again because you never had the Holy Spirit inside of you. You understand? So now you're born again. You have the Spirit of God inside of you. So all of these things that they're taking, they, they have four cups, okay? The four cups of sanctification is the first cup. The first cup is sanctification, the Kadosh cup. It's for holiness. When you accept Christ, God makes you eligible and holy for that coming day, okay? You have been set aside. You have been, you have been declared holy. You understand what I'm saying? You're declared holy. Do you have a fight to do? You, you still have a fight. You have a life to live? You still have a life. But the day you accept Christ, God declares you holy, okay? Just look at this. Okay, we're still on page two. Let me, uh, let, let's read, let's go to Exodus, I'm sorry. Let's go to Exodus chapter six. Exodus chapter six. Exodus chapter six, verse six says, therefore say to the Israelites, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the, the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves to them and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and, and with the mighty act of judgment. I will take you to be my own people. So for each I will that God says, they have a cup that they drink from, okay? Um, go over to Exodus chapter 12. You're in Exodus chapter 12? Listen what it says. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, this month, it's the month of Nisan, this month is to be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the 10th of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is, to, is, to, uh, is too small uh, for, for the whole lamb, then he get, he's given instructions. So go down to verse six. They take the lamb on the sixth of Nisan, I mean on the 10th of Nisan, and it says in verse six, take care of them, the lambs, for four, until the 14th day of the month, which is today, which is the 14th of the Hebrew calendar Nisan. Nisan. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all of the people of the community of Israel must slaughter the lambs at twilight. So they wait four days and then they kill the lamb. Now that means that Jesus, when he comes, what does John say when he sees Jesus coming into, the, into town? Behold the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. So John knew that Jesus was that lamb. You understand? So he comes in. Let, let's finish reading this, okay? Go, go to, uh, let me hit verse 7. Then they are to take some of the blood, okay? So they're supposed to kill the lamb at twilight, take some of the blood, put, uh, uh, put it on the side of uh, uh, the sides 
and the top of the door frame of the house where they eat the lamb. So now they, they've got to put blood where? Three spots on the sides and on the doorpost. So there has to be three spots of blood on that door. You understand? Okay, now when Jesus in John chapter 10 has this great discussion with them, and this is the discussion he has. I'm in John chapter 10. And it says here, I'll tell you the truth. The man who does not enter the, the, uh, 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 the sheep pen by the door, but climbs in any other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters the door uh, is, the, is the shepherd of the sheep. The watchman opened the door for him, and the sheep listened to, to his voice. If, if your Bible says gate, it's the Greek word for door. So, you know, translation from English is very bad sometimes. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all, all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they run, they run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand uh, what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth. I am the door for the sheep. All who come, who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep uh, did not listen to them. I am the door who, and it says, whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief only comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So Jesus is the door, okay? Why is Jesus the door? Where did they have to put the blood to make sure that the death angel didn't destroy them? On the door, three spots. Now I hate to, to see the crucifixion picture where they got Jesus' feet apart and he got four, he got four nails in his feet. I was like, that is a dumb artist. You have not read the Bible. They put his feet together. They only used three. You understand? They only used three. Three nails. What is your Bible? Oh, what's this page say? Uh, one cross, three nails, four given. You see that on page, uh, page three? One cross, three nails. So that means there's three spots of blood on the door. On the door, who's the door? Jesus. How many spots of blood? Three. Why? Because it's going to save you from death. What is death to God? Physical death? It is separation from life. Meaning you can't drink nothing no more you can't laugh no more you can't smell no more you can't listen to music no more you can't you know you can't have good conversations no more because in hades people are not concerned about jokes you know and, and talking and laughing and ain't nobody playing no music down there you understand separate see you tell somebody you get separated from from god forever they go good i can do what i want <laughs> there's nothing to do there that you want anymore you want a drink? Ain't no drinks in hell. Read Luke. You want something to eat? No food there. How about some nice smelling cologne? It don't smell too good there. You understand? You're saying you, you want to be separated from life and God supplies all this in someone who had a, a hell experience said that you can't even breathe. He says you're alive and you know you can't breathe and you, you're suffocating and he says you're still alive, but you can't breathe. Why? Because the one supplying you the air is God. He's the breath of fresh air. So you don't want to be separated from God as you think in your mind. 
Because separation means you just gave up everything that brought you life. You understand? So this is what Jesus. So one cross, three nails, four given, three spots of blood on the door in Egypt, three spots of blood because the death angel is coming. And if you have this blood on your door, guess what? You, they pass you over. So if you have Jesus on your door, and you have Jesus, the blood of Christ, you might die in the physical and death pass you over. You're being handed keys in a kingdom. Amen. And you're like, what happened? Your, your earthly body gave away. But here's your keys, there's your house. You're only going to be here seven years. We're going back. Jesus is going to reign and rule on earth. You know the plan, right? So see, if you don't understand that there's a God, you don't understand there's a plan, you don't understand anything. All you think, you're living. You know why? Because you came into this world, and what do they want? I don't want to tell you about God. Don't be a Christian. They're so goofy. Don't be a Christian. They're so goofy. And sometimes, like my coach said, we, su we survived the triple S one night, right? We survived spitting, screaming, and shouting. If you go to church and you don't hear about Jesus, then you just went to church. And you don't understand, you just, you just went to church. Religion, but you don't know how to be saved. You don't know how to be in relationship with God. You don't know what you've been forgiven for. You don't know what hell means. You don't know the plan of God for this earth. You have an enemy, because it says the thief comes with what? To steal, kill, and destroy. What was my house before my mother got saved? We were parties every Friday and Saturday in my house. My, my, our house was the party house, okay? Plenty of Johnny Walker Red and beers and whatever, okay? Then after uh, 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 the parties, you have to wake up and figure out who stayed, who's in your house overnight, okay? And it was just a filthy environment for a kid. But for us, we was eating potato chips and they had snacks and stuff. So we knew party night was a good night, but we wasn't learning Jesus. We was learning bad behavior from adults. You understand? We were learning bad behavior. from. So the, the older we got, if we don't finally meet Jesus, we're going to be emotional wrecks and sinful wrecks by the time we're teenagers. Then by the time you're a teenager, nobody tells you about Christ. You're going to be jacked up in your 20s because you don't understand that God made you to be in relationship with you and you're not supposed to live this whole life and never accept Jesus it's not supposed to happen if it does happen you're in trouble because now you haven't been born again and unless a man is born again he can not, not enter the kingdom of God you are not going to enter the kingdom of God unless you're born again okay so jesus knew you needed this and he came and he paid the price he is the door we're going to talk about the door for a second because this door is very important in exodus chapter 12 verse 22 it says take some of the hyssop dip it dip it into the blood in the in the basin and put some of the blood on the top and on the sides of the door frame none, none of you shall go out of the door of the house until morning what comes in the morning joy comes in the morning that's why he said look because why deliverance comes in the morning you understand so he says stay in christ who is the door until joy comes until deliverance happens you understand so you don't come in christ just to to go in and out in and out taking a chance because when the death angel comes you're supposed to be where you're supposed to be inside so christ says you're born again to stay in christ but listen to listen to revelation chapter 4 verse 1 because this is at the rapture because god has got to take the church out of the world it says, after this, I looked and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here. 
and I will show you what must take place after this. After what? You guys tell me. After what? The rapture. The rapture. I knew nothing about the rapture for my whole life. I learned about the rapture maybe when I was about 28 or 30. What rapture? What are you talking about? A movie called Left Behind? What are you talking about? Tribulation? What are you talking about? Had you ever been to church? Yeah. Did you understand what they were saying? No. <laughs> I didn't understand a thing they were saying. Ha! I didn't understand nothing. Did they ever talk about the rapture? No. Did they ever tell you about the rebirth of the nation of Israel and you're in the last generation? No, I don't know nothing about that. So I'm just living and nobody, I'm not finding out because first of all, I'm not reading for myself. And when I go to church, I'm not hearing about it because there's some different motivation going there. I'm just trying to gather people for money. I'm gathering people for money and I don't want you to leave. Understand? So you got to understand at some time you're supposed to find Christ. Amen. Sometimes you've got to find him because you want to be connected to life. You understand? So that's the rapture. It's going to happen and it's coming. Matthew chapter 25, verse 10. Listen what it says. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went into the wedding banquet and the door was shut. What door? The door to salvation. After the rapture, guess what? The door to salvation. You can't get in there by grace anymore. How do you get saved in tribulation? You got to get your hair chopped off. Or you got to get killed. You, and, you, and you can't just get your hair cut off. You got to get your hair cut off saying Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Because Revelation 12, chapter 20 says, these are those that were beheaded because of the testimony of Jesus. You're not just getting your head, you're not just going to heaven because you got your head cut off. You got your head cut off. You're, you got into heaven because you got your head cut off while you were saying Jesus is Lord. Yes. Do you want to go through the tribulation? No. 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 Does Jesus want you to go through the tribulation? No. no. He wants you to have eternal life. He wants to take you out before that time comes. But if you don't know and understand what's going on in the world, you're just living life. You don't understand sin. You don't understand that there's a spiritual battle for your soul. Yeah, but you know, the battle's over once I become a Christian. <laughs> Sit down, young man, let's talk. You understand? Because it is not over because you became Christian. Now you got to get in, you got to study your word, you got to pray, you got to be determined to walk with God. Sin is at your door knocking, but you must what? You must master it. And how are you going to master it? I got the Holy Spirit inside guiding me, telling me what to do, telling me how to study, how to stay strong in Christ. You understand? You're on a military war ground and you need to know all about you have an eternal life or eternal damnation. And, and you got to take it serious. You got to take it serious. I'm watching Christians walk away from Christ. For what? Because they want to have a, they want to have a good time. They want to they want to do what the world's doing. Not a good idea. Not a good idea. Isaiah 26, verse 20, last verse down here. It says, come, my people, enter thou into the chamber and shut the door about you. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation passes over. So what is he saying there? Because that's a lot of church speech, right? So he says, come, my people, where, come where? Up out of the earth. Rapture time. Go into your rooms, go into your homes, which I have made, because he said, I am going to build a place for you that where I am, you may be also. Go into your homes and shut the door, he says, until my wrath is over in the earth. Wrath is coming to the earth. Sins have to be paid for. 
devils are doing things. They think they're in control of the earth. They really do. They own Hollywood. They own all your music fantasies and record people that you love. They own all of this. They're sacrificing children. They're doing all of these evil things in the world. And you think that the world's just going, God's just going to let it keep going and going and going and letting Satan do all this. No, that's why he put us on a time clock. He said that sometimes you're going to, yeah, sometimes you're going to see my wrath, yeah. the whole world. Okay. Yeah. Go to the last page. I think it is. Of the... In six days, God created the earth. On the seventh day, he rested. In 6,000 years, God said, I will work. On the 7,000, I will rest. You entered the 6,000 year, 2017. You entered the days of Noah. You entered the time of Noah. 6,120 jubilees, 600, 120 years. You entered the last days. You are living in the last days. You, I, I, some people don't watch the news at all. God bless you. I don't, I, I don't blame you. But what's going on in Israel and what's going on with these wars with Russia? They bombed a, a, a hospital like last month. Russia bombed the hospital in Ukraine, killed all those people. And then they said, but it's horrible what Israel is doing to the Palestinians. I'm like, didn't you just bomb a hospital in, in Ukraine? And now Israel's in a war with Gaza, but Iran shooting 300 missiles at Israel. Then I look on the news and I see this because Ezekiel chapter 38 says, at the end days, May, uh, Gog, Magog, Persia, and Turgoma are going to come to war against Israel. Who is that? That's the leaders of those three nations. How long was Ezekiel 38 written? 2,000 years ago. So you got a scripture that tells you exactly which three nations are going to come against Israel. And look what three are having meetings together. It says, uh, 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 talks between Putin, Rashi, and, 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 and Drogen, or whatever, Russia, Iran, and Turkey teaming up against us. So prophecy is coming true. We're going home. Thank you. The rapture is going to happen. We're in here. I don't want anybody to miss it. But let me tell you what. Say a person misses the rapture. The church is on in the middle of tribulation. They say, oh, I believe in Jesus now. Say, I don't care what you do to me. I believe in Jesus. And they're running around through tribulation trying to survive. Say, they say they're going to try, they're going to starve them to death. There's going to be wars. All this stuff is going on, but he, you, you're trying to survive the tribulation. All that you're going on in the tribulation, there's not a person in hell who wouldn't trade places with you. Amen. Yes. Amen. You understand? Because while you're running through the tribulation, maybe if you can find some water somewhere, you can still breathe the air. Okay. You might even find a meal if they if they don't get you in the in, in the famine. You understand? All of that stuff going on in the tribulation. Let me tell you something. I don't care what you go through on in the tribulation. There's not a person in hell who wouldn't trade places with you and what you're going through in tribulation. So that tells you what hell is. You understand? Is it Pastor saying you try to scare us? Yes, I am. You know what I mean? I my mother didn't say, don't run in the car, don't run in the street because you got me hit by a car. You know what she said? Don't run in the street because if a car hits you, it's going to break every bone in your body. <laughs> I said, now I understand that. I understand that, you know. That, that's truth. You understand? Because you might not get the subtle. You're going to be separated from God for, for the rest of your life. You might not get it. No, it's going to hit you and all your bones going to be broken. And it's going to be painful. You understand? This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the 
the day he paid for your sins. You don't even have to think about going to hell. You can accept your payment now. You don't have to. This is the day that the Lord has made. Sing it with me, Jack. Oh, this is the day. This is the day the Lord has made that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad Stop. That, that is the ultimate song. Because on this day, Nisan 14th, Jesus is hanging on the cross. He's paying for every sin you've ever done. He's giving you the right to ask for forgiveness if you mess up. He's made entering to the kingdom very easy. It's today, Nisan 14th, the greatest celebration. You see how they were celebrating in Israel? What they cel they're celebrating something that happened 2,000 years ago. They don't even know sin has been forgiven and Jesus has provided eternal life. What's the second thing that's going to happen? We're going to talk about that Wednesday night. Because if today is the Nissan 14th in Israel, because it's already 12 hours ahead, they're celebrating. Three days from now will be what? Resurrection Day. I thought we just celebrated Resurrection Day. You guys, they got me on online apologizing to Jewish people, trying to explain to them why we're celebrating Resurrection Day three weeks before it happens. I'm like, well, you see, we want to apologize. We didn't mean to confuse you. Because you're not supposed to be celebrating Easter. That's a pagan holiday. You're supposed to be celebrating the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. So I apologize to them. Because three days from this day, Jesus did something else for us got up from the grave. He defeated sin. That way now you know death has no more power over you. That's right. That's right. Now you get a resurrected body like Jesus. That's right. So the victory is in three days. That's right. Hallelujah. But the payment, you've been redeemed on this day. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is it. I just can I show you one thing, best man? Oh, watch this, you guys. You see this right here? Amen. They have this bag, right? Amen. And they take this bag. We're gonna do uh, 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 after this. We're gonna take the bread and the. And the, and the they put three pieces of bread in a bag on Yom Kippur. They're doing this right now. They got three pieces of bread in a bag. Why do they have three pieces? Father, Son. Holy Spirit. Guess what they do with the middle bread? They take it and they break it. And they put it in the bag and they hide it in the house. And whatever kid finds it gets a reward. You know the, you know that this is called? The, the bag is called? The Yossi He came and he's coming. Yeah. That you're, that you're, it's a, why do they have a Greek word in a Jewish holiday right. that says he came and he's coming? He's coming. They take this and they hide it. Right. Whoever finds it gets a reward. Right. So if you find the Son, Jesus Christ, right. you get a reward. Right. And they use these and they break them up. Okay? They take the first cup. The second cup they don't even take. They just take a little bit of blood and they drip 10 drops into the water. For what? The 10 plagues that brought them out of Egypt. But you guess what's going to happen in our day? They're going to defeat 10 kings and Jesus is returning. Take both this cup, then we take the last cup and he says, well, I'm going to bring you and I'm going to redeem you and I'm going to bring you. One cup in their thing is that, is that Jesus went off when he went to Gethsemane, he took the cup of redemption with him. This is in their book. He took the cup of redemption with him, prayed, and began to sweat. The cup of redemption, why was he sweating over the cup of redemption?
because of the price he was going to pay. Major price has been paid to give you life. You can have it or you can reject it. Praise God. Praise God.